something, we can get to God if we're desperate. But he's, right. that song tells us, it really is a ministering song if you really look at the words. That's right. He wants it all. Don't teeter-totter. Don't go between the world and him. Look at it through his eyes. All right. He's given us spiritual eyes for you and I to see. Welcome this morning. Welcome all of you that are joining us through social media. We're here today to continue in the book of Mark. We're looking at chapter 1, verses 29 through 45. Once you have it, you will stand with me to glorify God's holy word in recognition of that, the fact it is his word. Okay. I'll be coming to you from the New American Standard Version, Mark chapter 1, verses 20, 29 through 45. And the word of God, it reads this way. And immediately after they left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was lying sick with a fever, and they immediately spoke to Jesus about her. And he came to her and raised her up, taking her by the hand, and the fever left her, and she served them. Now when evening came, after the sun set, they had begun bringing to him all who were ill and those who were demon-possessed. And the whole city had gathered at the door, and he healed many who were ill with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew who he was. And in the early morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went away to a secluded place and prayed there for a time. Simon and his companion eagerly searched for him, and they found him and said to him, Everyone is looking for you. He said to them, said to them, Let's go somewhere else to the towns nearby, so that I may also preach there. For this is why I came. And he went into their synagogues, preaching throughout Galilee, and casting out demons. And the man with leprosy came to Jesus, imploring him and kneeling down and saying to him, If you are willing, you can make me clean. All right. Moved with compassion, Jesus reached out with his hand and touched him and said to him, I am willing, be cleansed. And immediately the leprosy left him and he was cleansed. And he sternly warned him immediately and sent him away and said to him, See that you say nothing to anyone. But go, show yourself to the priest and offer for your cleansing what Moses commanded as a testimony to them. But he went out and began to proclaim it freely and spread the news around to such an extent that Jesus could no longer publicly enter the city, but stayed out in unpopulated areas and they were coming to him from everywhere. And you may be seated. If I were to title this message, and I did for you, it's, it says it's, all, it's time to be about it. It's time to be about it. One more, one more time. It's time to be about it. If you think about what the title is saying, it, it, it's kind of reminiscent of Nike, just do it. All right. <laughs> Or the old saying, don't talk about it, be about it. Yeah. It's time to be about it. See, what these titles are pointing us to is we are going to reap what we sow. All right. The question is, what have you sown so that you can reap? Oh, my God. See, our message today is about servitude. All right. Amen. Think about that. Servitude. So, we find ourselves humble before God right now. You came to the altar. You 
went before God because you have encountered something that is slowing you down. Oh, no. And if we're being honest to some of us, we've stopped. Because something in our life has gotten a hold of us and we can't figure out what to do. All right. Our situation is full of peril because we know we're supposed to be doing something but yet we can't get our bodies to do what God has called us to do. All right. So we're experiencing no growth. We are in this circular pattern and it's just happening over and over again. Right. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. And the thing is, our mindset is staying the same. We're thinking that we're turning these things over to God, but they're actually staying in that same mode. All right. There's a repetitive emptiness. The question is, when are we going to learn? All right. Because we are learning something. Or we're going to stay in our comfort position. We want to complain about what's going on, but we're not doing anything. Somebody help. All right. Come on. See, we're stuck for a reason. God has put us in the position that he now has our attention and we won't do the very thing that God tells us to do. Turn it over to him. Y'all were singing that song, weren't you? All of me, right? And then when he asks for part, he wants all, your heart, your mind, your soul. God wants it all. But the problem is we're more in love with our habits than what we are with God. We have become comfortable in this dark world and we have put some habits down that will keep us away from a lot of the ills that are out in the world. We've allowed our house to become our sanctuary and God told us we're not even staying here. We are going on. Going to the place that he's prepared for us. But we're so short-sighted that we don't surrender ourselves and we won't do what God is calling us to do. Well, Pastor, I don't know what he's telling me to do. Mm. How much time did you spend with him today? All right. What about yesterday? Mm. What about the week before? Or the month before? What are you giving to God so that you can understand what he has for you? All right. Our spiritual discipline this month is that we read and study the Bible. God calls that our weapon. Yes. Scripture says it's our sword. All right. right? We have something that can help us, but we won't turn to it because it's not physical. Mm. I know. We're easy to grab a bottle or watch TV to help us through our pain. We'll take medications. We'll do everything else, but what God has... Come on, somebody. Help Come me on. out of here. For us to get to God, we got to submit ourselves all the way. Yes. And we won't do it, and then we're crying out to God, God, help me. And he says, why are you crying? Yes. I told you to count it all joy. Yes. Amen. Even when it hurts, you turn to me in your tears, and you let me know what you need. Yes. Yes. And then I'm going to give it to you because you're asking really for me. All right. Amen. Well, I don't know how to serve God. I don't know what he's asking me to do. You can do something. Yes. Amen, somebody. Amen. You can do something. Oh, well, okay. pastor, here you go again. I'm, you you done took out that word and you cut me. And I want to say I don't appreciate it. But God's telling you, you need to be cut because he's carving us into something. Uh, not what we were. We, we know who we were. Is I got to get you to who you need to be. So I'm going to tell you this story about the teacup. All right. And I want you to tell me who are you are. Who are you inside of this example? Okay. All right. Okay. So there once was a well-educated, highly successful man who went to a Zen master to help him work through his problems. The Zen master started conversing with the man, but the man kept frequently interrupting him. Oh my God. The Zen master couldn't get out but a few words, and 
the successful man was thorn in his opinions about what he thought. He wouldn't allow the Zen master to finish his sentence. All right. So the Zen master, he said, you know what? I'm going to offer him a cup of tea. He asked him, do you want a cup of tea? Yeah, I'll take a cup of tea. He keeps, keeps talking. And so he sets the tea cups out, and he takes the tea, and he starts pouring it into the man's cup. He lets it fill all the way up until it's spilled over. And the man says, stop, stop, stop. You, you see it's, it's overflowing. And he said, well, you too are similarly, uh, similarly over full. You came to me for me to help you with your problems, but you're so opinionated that you won't even let my solution in to your situation. My Lord. Where are you in the story? You see, this is what we do to Jesus. We say, Jesus, I, I got this problem and here's my problem. And Jesus is waiting for us to shut up so he can give us the answer. All right. But we keep telling Jesus how we want him to fix our problem. Yeah. We won't yeah. listen to him when he's trying to do Come on, somebody help me. Yeah. All right. See, we love being in charge. Mm -hmm. Amen. So much so that we won't even stop to listen to what God has to say. Mm -hmm. So the first thing God's going to tell us is do the work. You want to know how you get closer to Jesus? Do the work. All right. See, when we look at the first set of passages here, we're going to take verse 29 through 34. And I want you to see, it's the same thing that I said to you the last time I came to you. The first thing this passage opened up, you see Jesus working. All right. Y'all get that, do the work. You see uh -huh. Jesus working. Okay, I'm just trying to make sure y'all with me. And then we see him going to Simon and Andrew's house. All right. And see, this, this passage actually helps us with something. It was like, well, you know, the Catholic priests today, they tell us that they really can't marry, right? Mm -hmm. And then we wonder if we should really marry. Mm -hmm. um, well, not really so much in our era, but uh, <laughs> there was that question, if we can marry. And we open up and we see Peter is married. Mm -hmm. Or else how can... There be a mother-in-law in our scripture. All right. Come on now. Hold on for a second. This is letting us know that there are some things we can do that people told us that we can't. And wonder what y'all know y'all heard it. Because the mess filters all the way through. It doesn't just stay in one type of religion, it'll flow through. Well, if you really want to be holy, you you will stay pure and maybe dedicate yourself to being celibate for God. Y'all heard it. Mm -hmm. But yet here in scripture, we see an apostle, soon to be, married. All right. And what's interesting, and if you really slow down and read this scripture, you see that Jesus is healing the mother-in-law on the Sabbath. Uh-huh. Ooh. Oh, yes. mm. <laughs> Do the work, right? <laughs> Somewhere in scripture. All right, I'm going to tell y'all where y'all know I am. Somewhere in scripture it says that the Sabbath was made for the man, not the man for the Sabbath. Amen. Mark chapter 2, verse 27. Right. Go ahead and check that out. Well, Pastor, what are you trying to tell me? Because these laws were set up for men to follow. But what Jesus is telling us is this. The laws are set up for us to do things according to God's standard. There's times where we have to go to the heart of the law to get us past it. All right. Now hold on. I'm not giving you no free reins to do what you want. That's not what I'm saying. What I am saying is this. When Jesus told us back in the Old Testament that we're not to kill, we didn't understand what that really meant. But when he got to the New Testament, the new era, he told us 
Well, you kill even by your thoughts. Uh -huh. mm. By wishing ill on your brother mm. or your mother right. or your cousin yeah. or someone else, your thoughts kill. Yeah, right. Ooh, that's, that's right. right. So if I'm gathering this thing upright, there was a need on the Sabbath and God healed on the Sabbath. Mm. Wow. I, I, I want you to see that Jesus is who he said he is. Yeah. Yeah. He's God and he's setting the example for you and me. Amen. Like today, if we're worshiping God, we already have our day planned out, right? Uh -huh. But what if you run into someone that's in need today? All Jesus right. is the example. He's saying if they need you, you're to be right there for them. All yeah. right. Amen. This lady, she had an illness. Signed his mouth, there was an illness. And I want you to see the power that God had. Because he just put it on display in the synagogue before they got to Simon and Andrew's house. It was on display because he drove out the demon. Y'all know, come on. Amen. It was just last week he drove out the demon. Yeah. And then all these people came and he drove. Come on, y'all help me. <laughs> Yes. And in this power situation, you see God heal his mother-in-law, uh -huh. right? Yes. Sign his mother-in-law, and she is healed immediately. That's right. right. Hmm. You say, well, why is that important? Because it shows the power that you and I have. Yes. Well, I don't have the power to heal. Well, you may have the power of administration. All right. You may have the power of helps. Yeah. See, you do have a power. The problem is you don't know what it is, and you're trying to figure it out to connect with it. Because whatever the Spirit gave you, Amen. you have that power supernaturally. Amen. All right. So sometimes you can comfort someone that someone else can't come. My Lord. Someone you someone is out there that you can help supernaturally that someone else can't help to the level that you can do. But you're sitting down on that gift. Ooh, and you know God is putting individuals in your mind for you to go and help. That's okay. why we got to do the work. Let's look at yeah. the example. Amen. Jesus is in the house of Simon ah. and his brother Andrew, and there was a need. And he took care of the need, right? Uh -huh. Why does Galatians 6 and 2 tell you to go alongside your brother? Why? Uh, it actually tells us in that scripture, it says, so you fulfill the law of Christ. And what is that law? Y'all remember Matthew chapter 22 verses 37 through 39? Love is at the heart of these two laws. Remember the Pharisees were trying to trip up Jesus. And all these laws, God, which one is the greatest? He said, well, they all boil down to two. The first one is to love you with your heart, mind, and your soul. And the second is just like the first for your neighbor. Fulfill the law of Christ. Mm -hmm. Those two laws break it down for us. We need to love. Yeah. And because Jesus had displayed such power, the Sabbath now is in. Yeah. It's getting dark out. It's okay for them now to walk to where Jesus is. All right. Hey, we just heard these people that you healed in the synagogue. We uh -huh. we we heard you had authority and power. You drove out. You drove out the demon. Uh, uh, uh. Well, here we got some people that are sick uh -huh. and they are demon possessed. All right. So do you believe in demon possession? Amen. I want you to count up how many times we see it in our passage today. All right. See, sometimes science has got us to the point where we just want to write things off as being something that we can put the label on, but we label it wrong. Amen. There are people that are actually out there today. Yeah. It was prevalent in Jesus' time, just like it is today, All that right. are demon-possessed. Yes. Come on. Y'all yes. may even know them personally. Amen. Can I tell you something? Yeah. If you're walking with God, yeah. oh, no. that demon is not going to be comfortable being right. around you. Yeah. All right. Mm. But maybe you showing the demon some stuff that it's okay. <laughs> See, we got to walk with God for a reason. Oh, Jesus. Because that part that we have, 
is there by design to entice you. Or right. maybe it's the other way around. I don't know. That's not for me to tell you. <laughs> but what God is pointing out is we got to put things in its rightful place. That's right. If a person is sick, they're sick. Uh -huh. A person is demon possessed, uh -huh. they're demon possessed. Put it what it is. That's right. And we see God doing the work again. Didn't I say do the work? Yeah. Do the work. God's doing the work. Uh, and what he's doing is he's healed them and he's taken out the demons. Yeah. Amen. My, my. So I ask you again, what did you do for Christ today? Did you start off your day on your knees in prayer? What about yesterday? Did you have a conversation while you were out running about doing what you wanted to do for you? Did you even bring up God in a conversation? All right. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go to last week. Let's go to last month. Let's go to last year. All right. What is the fruit of you doing work when our example is Christ and he's... Come on. Mm -hmm. All right. God's breaking the rules to uh -huh. help. He's helping on the day that he's not supposed to be helping. All right. <laughs> and it said, look at, the, look at the scripture. The crowd uh -huh. was outside of the door of Simon and Peter's house. Uh -huh. They couldn't follow him by the rule. But they followed him once the rule said they could. Right. And then they bombarded him. Oh, God. Why? Because he showed them love and he cared and he showed that they could find oh, yeah. God in him. Yeah. Ooh, here's the message. My there man. it is right there. I told you it's about servitude. The question is, who's coming to you? Mm. Mm. Who's asking you to see the God in you to show that you care for them? Mm. See, the power of God, the one thing it does, the power of God attracts. Why? Because there's light and love inside of what we do for God. Yeah. It's about the relationship that we have with him. Mm. And so we drop down to the next part of our message that God has prepared for us. He told us first, do the work. Mm -hmm. And he set up the scene. He said, look, I'm working. And I want you to take this example and take it to heart. Mm -hmm. I'm working, so I need you to work. Mm -hmm. So do the work. But you're saying, well, if I'm doing the work, what do I get out of it? Mm -hmm. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. let, let, let's hold off on that for a second. Let's, let's see, if we, we do the work, then what God is telling us that there is work that must be done. Y'all catch that? Right. That's going to that's be the second part. But to do the work that we have to do, we have to be ready to do the work, right? That's right. So let's see what God tells us to do in order for us to get ready to do the work. All right. Because we know, he says, do the work, right? And then the next thing is, we know there's work to be done. But look at verse 35. Verse 35. It says, in, in the early morning, you know it's early when it's still dark out. All right. Jesus got up, left the house, and went away to a secluded place. And what did he do there? He prayed for a time. You want to get ready to do the work? Let's follow the example. All right. But we got to understand, Jesus is recharging here, right? Yeah. All right. <laughs> Some of us, we came to church this morning tired. The question is, what are you tired from? Oh God! Did you stay up last night and watch the movies? <laughs> Did you get caught up in some of your old memory songs? Come on, somebody help me. What's the reason why you tired this morning? All right. And the one thing we may have a problem with understanding, if it didn't have nothing associated with Jesus, what do you need to get regenerated from? <laughs> Some of us were on the phone last night with our friends and they, they really needed some help so you stayed on the phone long enough to make sure they were okay. Mm -hmm. You need some recharging. 
Or you may have went to someone that was in need last night. You need to be recharged. Or you're worn out from the day because you were showing love and how you were talking to someone. It was about the work of the kingdom. Mm. But God tells us after you do the work, spend some time with me. Yes. Get recharged. Amen. Amen. But we're tired, some of us, because we're worn out from what we're doing about us. All right. And we're not looking for God to help us. We're going through some hard situations. And God says, you won't come to me. Uh -uh. You won't find your quiet space in your house or your apartment to be alone with me. Oh, God. But yet you keep saying, you tired. It's the same thing every day in and day out. I can't seem to get out of this cycle that I'm in. And God said, I got you here so you would turn to me. Don't just call out my name without submitting to me. Mm. And sometimes your family and friends will try to distract you. Jesus is alone and he's praying. He's building back up what he needs to get to and getting into the will of God. And here comes Simon. Oh God. Here he comes. He's coming on the scene. They searching for him. Where's Jesus? Where's Jesus? Where's Jesus? Where's he at? Come on now. Uh, uh, if you got a kid, you know what I'm talking about, right? Mom, 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 dad, dad. Where, where, where were you? And it says Simon and his group found him and said, everybody's looking for you. Now you know what you would have said, right? That's why we got a loving God, because he showed us what to do. Because we had told him something. Yeah. Once he found, look, I'm with God. Leave me alone. <laughs> right? But Jesus, he says something that really, it may not make sense at first. But we got to think about what's going on. He said to them, let's go somewhere else to the towns nearby. So there was still a lot of people that still needed to be healed, right? Yeah. There were still some demon-possessed people that needed it right there. That's right. But the crowd was after him for the wrong reason. Mm -hmm. And see, you and I need to be careful because we're in his house and we're sending up all these holy prayers and alms to him and he's saying, you in my house for the wrong reason. Come on, somebody. Amen. I'm standing before you proclaiming his name. Yeah. And God said, you better strip yourself too. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. And there were people in the crowd that were just there for what they could get out of Jesus. Uh-oh. Uh I want to remind you, when Jesus started this thing, he was where? In the synagogue. Right. And the demons were in the synagogue where Jesus was to come on, somebody help me out. Amen. I'm just trying to show you that everybody in the house of God is not there for the right. And Jesus said, they're here for the show of me. Mm. Pastor, what does that got to do with me? Jesus. Well, we have this thing with God that I like to call the genie center. <laughs> You know, whatever we want, we want to turn to God and rub the lamp and have him give us what we want. But after he gives us what we want, we want to go back to the lamp again. It wasn't enough the last time. We just want to keep rubbing. And the whole crowd that was there, they were there with their genie lamp and they was rubbing it for God. To, come on, somebody. And God said, I got a purpose. And I got to stick to my purpose. Because if you read the rest of 38, it says, so that I may also preach there, for this is why I came. Yes. God has saved us for a purpose. All right. Is anyone looking for you? Uh-oh. 
I told you there's power <laughs> when we display what God has called us to do. Who's looking for you? Better yet, who are you looking for? All right. Are you looking to rub the lamp again? <laughs> or are you doing the will of God? And you're attracting people and you're getting worn out by helping them. And so you need to spend some quiet time. Oh, help, help right. me out. Right. Well, I can't get to my quiet time, Pastor, because these people are coming after me. Sometimes you got to say no. Yeah, yes, that's right. But don't say no for your selfish reason. Say no because you're being worn down by serving Christ. It's all about servitude. Don't, don't miss that. See, Jesus needed time with God because he was doing the work. Why? My second point. Because there was work to do. All right. And so Jesus was getting ready for the work. What are we getting ready for? I know. And if someone is in need and they come up to you, what are you going to give them? Are you going to give them the light of God? All right. Or are you going to give them some mess? My God. You know, you're going to play around with the demon. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. oh, we get in verse 39, we see something going on here. It says, and he went into the synagogue. Oh, there he is again. Preaching throughout Galilee. I want you to, I want you to get this. Oh, God. Jesus started in a particular city. Galilee. Just like he has us placed in a particular city, yeah. Pomona. Right. Mm -hmm. And so what we find out is God is active in the community going where he should find his father. And look, he comes up on another synagogue and look who's in the synagogue. <laughs> Demons! It's an S. <laughs> it wasn't one like he encountered what we just dealt with just a little bit earlier, right? This time it has an S on it. Yeah. There's a bunch of them up in the house of God. Oh, God. And you've got to ask yourself this question. Why are they comfortable in the house of God? Mm. Oh, no. That means we're letting some things go mm -hmm. that needed to be addressed. Demon, why are you comfortable in the house of God? The things of God should find comfort with God. The things of the devil should not find comfort with the things of God unless we are shielding them. Woo. All right. And so we see the power of God casting out demons from the synagogue. Thank you. Which means God is telling us, there better be order in my house. Yeah. If there's not order in my house, that house is not going to be right. Yeah. So we better be careful of who we're aligning ourselves with in the house of God. If they're not displaying who God is, oh God. And because of the light of God, because his power was on full display, his light brought this man of leprosy to him. Uh oh, here we go. According to the rules, this man with leprosy was not supposed to approach anyone. He was supposed to be outside the city. Come on, y'all. Catch this. All right. But the man came to Jesus, and Jesus is breaking the law, too, because he's not supposed to interact with this man with leprosy. Hold on. But then he got him. Come on, he is. <laughs> and then this man in need, he did not spend the time outside the city as he was back in that Leviticus tells us. He was not supposed to be, come on, somebody help me here. <laughs> but look at the man's position. He comes to Jesus and he drops to his knees. Uh -huh. That's right. And he says, if you are willing. It wasn't the question, could God heal him? He said, if you're willing. Catch that, y'all. Mm. See, he's walking in these areas and all these people that should be his people are there just because of what Jesus can do for them, not the fact that he's the Savior. Wow. He's the Messiah. And he's breaking all the natural laws, healing and driving out. Come on, y'all, help me out here. And this man in need, he's unclean. Oh, maybe I'm not catching that. You and I are unclean right. when we came to Christ. There was no reason for him to save us. 
There was no reason for him to clean us. But his blood cleanses us. And, and this man tells him, if you're willing, I already know you have the power. The belief was in the Come on, somebody. Help me How can I get out of my situation? First, you better believe in Jesus. This man was in a bad situation. And he went right to the Father, he went to, I'm sorry, to Jesus, and dropped down and said, if you're willing, make me clean. And you know what happened? Because of his belief. See, some of us were taking our problems to Jesus and we have no, no, there's nothing in us that really wants Jesus to get us out of it. Oh God. Some of us like to naturally complain. And if God fix our situation, who are we going to complain to? Because that complaint, it brings on people. But you'll notice, people don't like being around complainers for long. They run up, come on, somebody help me. But when God can fix something, and you really tell them with your heart, mind, and soul, I need you to fix this, God. All right. And we go down to our knees, and we give it all up to him. Oh, God. All of a sudden, y'all look at it, verse 41. So. Look at that. Jesus was moved with compassion. He reached out to him and he, uh-oh, he's breaking the law again. He touches this unclean man. He said to him, I'm willing to be clean. I, I, I like verse 42 because it shows us the power of God. Once we sell out to it, it says, immediately Y'all catch that? Yes. Ain't no question. The power is there. His faith activated it. Come on, y'all. You really want to get out of what you're in? Have some true faith in your Savior. The one that we confess to. That he was going to be the Lord over our lives. But what you and I do is, we don't want to give up the control. The words flow. But there's no meaning behind it. Well, how do you know me, Pastor? Well, let's see if something this helps. Let me go along with you. Hold on. You on your job, and you telling your boss All right. what they need to do. All right. Right. Oh my God. And boss, you ain't even bossing me right. Let me tell you how I want to be boss. All right. You coming around here with your tone inflection going crazy? That ain't helping nothing. Let me tell you. I don't know if I'm going to tell you. You and your group of friends. And everybody got an opinion. And you keep saying, no, that ain't right. This is what you need to do. Why? Because you're in control. You got it. You at home. Okay. Kids telling you, this is what I need to do. No, let me tell you. All right. And see, they valid in what they're saying, but you ain't going to listen to it. Because why? It's my power, it's my control. All right. And what I'm telling you, this creeps into your relationship with God. Come on now. Because you don't really surrender everything to him. Oh, no. You'll take it to a point and then you'll hold on to it. Guess why you stuck? Because you won't drop to your knees and give it all to God. Mm -hmm. See, the man with leprosy was sold out to the fact that Jesus is who he said he was. At this point in time, he's a healer. And he says, heal me. I'm down on my knees. Take this leprosy from me. Oh, no. And because of what he had in him, connecting with Jesus, he was cleansed. Look, look at that. Look at the end of 42. It says, he was cleansed. And then God does something that's consistent. And you and I may say, well, this is kind of crazy. But we got to understand it really makes sense in how all this needed to come about. He tells this man, look, I healed you. I need you to go to the priest because you got to do your presentation before the priest 
so they can look you over and make sure you're clean. Right. But I need you not to tell nobody. Where have we seen this before? When he was casting out the demon That's right. in the first synagogue, oh, that's right. the demon tried to tell on Jesus who he was. Uh -huh. Shut up! <laughs> Get out! Oh, and here again we see the same thing. It wasn't time for Jesus to be known right. as the Son of God yet. He was not to be known as the Messiah yet. Because if they did, then the crowds would even be larger. As a matter of fact, when this man ran his mouth, all these people started to come, and he couldn't even come into the town anymore. I know. So he, Jesus had to go into the unpopulated areas. And even there, they were still finding him. Did y'all did y'all catch that? Uh -huh. It didn't help that this man ran his mouth, and now God is presenting the gospel. Come on, y'all. You and I wonder, why is it important to learn a Christ? Pastor, why do you have us fill out these prayer cards? Because that's one of the tools God gave us to operate in this world. God, I mean, Pastor, why do you want us to meditate on his word? Because that's the direction that we got in his word that's going to help us in this world. Oh, Prayer was first. Meditation was our next one. Uh -huh. What was our next one? Okay, fasting. Good. And what's this one? Which one we in now? Okay. Come on. The word. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Maybe through these disciplines. Make sure you fill out your cards, too. Mm -hmm. The prayer card. Okay. Maybe this is the discipline that gets you. I'm going to commit to God to open his word and at least read some of it. All right. I'm going to start with just one verse. Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to go to a whole paragraph. Then I'm going to grow to two paragraphs. Then I'm going to get bold and go to a whole chapter. Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to really stand out and go to a whole book. Okay. Then I'm going to get on a Bible reading. See, God Please. just wants us to start. Yes, Amen. yes, yes. So we can get to know him. Because when we know him, then we know that there's work to be done okay. and that we need to be prepared to do it. Yes, yes. Well, Pastor, I don't know how to get prepared. And the glory of this is, that's why we have the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Direct some of your prayers to the Holy Spirit because he's the one that converts our prayers anyway. Amen. Pray to him because he's God also. Yes. And so if you're not understanding what you're going through or what you're supposed to be doing next, you shouldn't be talking to everyone. You should first start talking on your knees to God. All right. Amen. Take me to where you want me, God. Mm -hmm. Because I see in your passage of scripture today that it's all about doing the work. Oh, Jesus. When the Holy Spirit came upon you, you went to work. If that's our example, and we have confessed God, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> and the Holy Spirit is in you, if our example is he got the Holy and went to work, what should we be doing? All right. Oh, my Lord. Getting to work. Well, we're wrapping this up. What can I do right now, Pastor? What can I do right now? Well, what you can do right now is share the gospel. All right. Well, Pastor, I'm not comfortable doing that. That's not my thing. I'm a quiet person. Well, the only thing I can tell you is it's one of the things that God tells us we have to do. Yeah. So it's not about our comfort. It's about what we're required to do. If we're truly children's, uh, children of a loving God, then we should be doing what he told us to do. Share the gospel. All right. You got a question? Share the gospel. Uh -huh. You don't know what to do? Share the gospel. Okay. When you get stuck and say, well, God, I don't know what to do, share the gospel. Mm. 
And you say, well, where should I share it? God started in his city, so let's start in ours. All right. It, it, this is not hard. It, Jesus started off in Galilee. Did y'all catch that? Uh -huh. He's in Galilee, right? Mm -hmm. That's Galilee. Uh -huh. Where are you at right now? Oh, y'all. Pomona, Galilee. All right. Some of us come from other areas, too. Uh -huh. But just start where you are. Okay. And you can, you can start. Check this out. This, this is so hard. This is so hard. <laughs> just start with your neighbor. Oh, God. Hold on. You, you, you can go to the left and find neighbors, and you can go to the right and find neighbors. So guess what you're never going to be in the end supply of? Neighbors. Because right. once you finish with Pomona, then you get to go into the other areas. Right. It, just, it just goes on and on. You might find yourself in Laverne, right? You might find yourself in Upland. Right. You will find yourself in all these connecting cities, yeah. but God says you can start where you we can't forget that God he loves you and I he loves us Amen. and in that love there comes a responsibility God has made us his children or maybe you don't believe that you're part of the royal priesthood oh, maybe you just like reaping the benefits you're, you're in the crowd because you only find yourselves in two places with God. All right. Just two. One is with him, and the other is without him. All right. You got to decide if you're going to be in the crowd that's just there for the show, or you're going to be with him sharing who he is. My Lord. Amen. Oh, Jesus. God is telling you it's about your service. Mm. And how are you serving God right now? Thank you, Lord. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you on the lesson today. God, you gave us everything. Yes, Lord. And in response, God, you're just asking us to look like you, to sound like you, and to do you. God, so change our hearts where it's hardened. Open our understanding so we understand the power that you've given us to share you. God, it's not about us and what we can do. It's all about showing them the kingdom and the glory of who you are. It's in Jesus' name we pray this. Amen. 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 We are now open the doors of the church.